I've got with me a client's desktop PC. What he's done is he's tried to upgrade his cooler, but after he's put everything back into the case, he's turning the switch on, there is no power whatsoever. So today we're gonna troubleshoot this. Let's take it out. Hey tags and welcome, this is Ash from Himitech and if you're new here on this channel, I want to help you improve your relationship with technology. So find a subscribe button, click on it, click on the bell icon to go for me to take it. Also, Amazon affiliate links in the description below. All right, I've done a full troubleshoot series. Please refer back to those. I'm going to put a list of links in the description as well. But essentially, this computer, we've got a power problem. Now guys, I've told you before, don't overcomplicate your life. If you have a power issue, please, please, please take it one step at a time. Do not think about processor, RAM, all this, because these are uh, afterwards things you need to do. Power problems mean power troubleshooting. So the first thing you should be checking out for is obviously the mains power cable. And it's very easy to do if you've got a multimeter, you check for AC voltage, okay? And I've already tested this, we're getting 230 volts in there, so I know this is fine. If you haven't got one of these, please grab yourself a different kettle lead plug and test it and make sure it's actually working. Do not test with something that you do not know whether it works or not. And always calibrate your test because you test before and then test after, okay? So we know that's working. Now, if, like me, you have access to other power supplies, because it's a power issue, then it takes about a minute to just unplug the 24 pin from this and also the 4 pin CPU, and you plug in your power supply, the new one, to test. Now, again, do not make the mistake of assuming, even it's a brand new power supply, that it should work. It's not always like this. And I did a video recently, and I'm gonna put a link above there, that sometimes you can have access to a brand new but dead power supply. So do not assume. If you're gonna test with the power supply, make sure it's working. And you guys know we've done pin tests to check whether the power supply can turn on or not. And again, please find the description below. So this client and many of us make this mistake all the time. Two mistakes he did. One, when he removed the motherboard from the case and then he was changing whatever components, he did not test for post before he put back into the case. And this is a huge mistake. Please always test outside of the case before you put back because once you put back, you're not going to know for sure what the problem is. So make sure you always do this. That was his mistake. And the second mistake that a lot of people are going to make, they're going to forget that when it comes to power, you've also got a power button in front, which connects a cable all the way down to the front panel connectors, which needs to be checked. So this is why I'm saying to you, if it's power issue, you check power from the back, you check power supply, you check the power button, you check the cable, you check the front panel, you check all the power sources first. And in this case, it took me a few minutes, but I've seen a problem I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you a very silly mistake many of us can do, including myself. And we're gonna zoom in because I found that the front panel cable, which connects this button to the motherboard, hasn't been put correctly. Very silly mistake, but it can happen. Come over and I'll show you. Now, there's a lot of cables in there, but one thing I think he forgot to do is to connect these multicolored cables. I don't know if you can see. Can you be seen or not? This cable, I can see it's actually stuck underneath the motherboard. So it's not been plugged into the front panel connectors. And with all this mess and this very tight space, it is difficult to even see the positive and negative terminals for me to either bridge the connection or use one of these switches to be able to test the motherboard uh, right now. A quick thing, could potentially be that you find the reference for this motherboard, look online for a manual, see if you can locate the positive and negative terminal, and then you can use either a screwdriver to bridge the connection, or you can use one of these switches to try and turn it on. But because I cannot see it, it's very difficult, and since this cable is already tucked underneath anyway, we're gonna have to remove the motherboard anyway to be able to reconnect this whole thing. So we'll do that in next step. 
Also, there's a slight danger if ever you see there are some things not put back correctly and you're trying to turn on a motherboard by giving it voltage, so you might risk short circuiting the whole system. Not very advisable. So I am pretty confident this is the issue. Okay, because if you look at the back, this is the cable usually that connects the front panel and it's going under there. That has to be, I am 99% confident, there's always a 1% error. So we'll do this next step. Okay, all right, so I've just unscrewed the motherboard. Just to let you know, you do not have to remove things like RAM and the cooler. Just make sure you've unplugged everything that connects the motherboard to the case, and we've done that. And after removing the motherboard, and as usual, please make sure you're working on anti-static uh, surface. Now come over, if you see, this is the cable that was stuck underneath the motherboard. And this is the front panel connector. Now, hopefully, we're just gonna connect this and test it, and it should work in theory. Now, here's the magical bit. I'm actually going to do a post, but I'm not gonna connect the monitor, and if you want more details, go watch this video up there, where I did a video how to check for posts with only five components. You do not even need a monitor, mouse, keyboard, and everything else. As long as you've got a speaker cable connected for the buzzer, because you're listening to the beep sound. But remember, every motherboard might differ. Some motherboards will give you one single beep for a successful pause. Others will give you two. Some will give you nada. You must make sure you check with the manufacturer for your beep code. You just put the graphics card on. I've got a PCI cable. It's connected to the power supply. Still got my fan out there. And we are going to turn it on. Do you just have it listen to a single beep code on this computer? And I'm hoping it should be fine. We've just done a test. So let's do that. Switch on, power button on, and fan spinning. Beep. We heard the one beep code. This is fantastic news. I am 99% confident I don't even need to test with the monitor whether it's posting or not. However, to be 100% thorough, some of you might not be very confident or you may not have a speaker cable or you may not know what your single beep means, I'm gonna be thorough. We're gonna just connect a VJ cable through this DVI adapter, connect to this monitor and test for pause hopefully. So just to prove my theory about the uh, not needing a monitor and keyboard and mouse, but still I wanna be thorough. So we've just attached a monitor, mouse and keyboard and we're gonna turn it on again and you should hear a single beep fan spinning on everywhere beep display and i'm going to enter the bios perfect now back to me after this successful post outside the case i put everything back inside the case and this time connected the front panel bit correctly and as you can see on the screen, it is posting fine, not an issue. So you need to make sure you do this again before you screw all the ports back together because you don't want to find out that you assumed a correct post outside means a correct post inside. Always test as you go along. So that's it. This is a troubleshoot done. We've pinpointed exactly what the problem was. It was a silly mistake. It was one cable that wasn't connected and uh, all you need to do is to use the logic and the system I've taught you guys about thinking about how a computer works, the 10 components you need to make a fully functional computer turn on and get on the display and logging into your screen is power and then you follow the process. So go watch the series. If you apply these techniques, there's no problem in a computer you won't be able to resolve. I promise you, most of you who can't do it, you're either assuming or you're skipping steps. Please don't do this. For you can make sure you watch these videos on your screen to improve your relationship with technology and also subscribe, click the bell icon and use my Amazon affiliate links. And please don't forget if you want to contribute to the channel, there will be a PayPal donation link. And also I've got a new Patreon account. Go there, support me there. And hopefully I'll see you on the channel because I'm inviting you over. Peace out.